Before he was the director of Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, Zack Snyder weaved worlds within worlds in Sucker Punch. Its twisted final act was left open to interpretation and deemed incomprehensible by many, but we're here to help with the ending of Sucker Punch Explained. Whose story is this? One of the key points of contention in understanding Sucker Punch is determining whose point of view the story is actually being told from. The first and most straightforward idea is that this is a story about Baby Doll, who's locked in an asylum and teams up with four friends to escape. In the process, she imagines herself as a burlesque dancer and her dances within the fantasy as elaborate battle sequences. Baby Doll doesn't escape in the end, but her fantasy helps tell the story of how she got her friend Sweet Pea out in her place. The second interpretation posits that all of this happened as well, except the fantasy is in Sweet Pea's head, as she imagines her friends who saved her as great warriors in an epic story. The third and most complex is that almost nothing in the film really happened, and that it's all a fantasy unfolding in Sweet Pea's head as she's about to be lobotomized. When watching the film, it's an interesting exercise to keep all three possibilities in your head. All the world's a stage. Though many of the fantasy visuals in Sucker Punch are there simply because they look cool, a few of the details hold a deeper meaning, including the very first thing the film shows us. Snyder opens by showing us a child's bedroom set on a stage, then dissolves that set into Baby Doll's bedroom during the death of her mother. When Baby Doll arrives at the asylum, we see another stage in the room where Dr. Gorski encourages her patients to act out their trauma. So this is what we call the theater. It's there, sitting on the stage on a bed with a striking resemblance to that first shot of Baby Doll that we see Sweet Pea for the first time. It's also there that Dr. Gorski tells Sweet Pea she's in control. The recurring motif of the stage plays heavily into the film's running theme of performance as salvation, particularly when Baby Doll dances to get what she needs to escape. But what if it also signals to us that this is all part of Sweet Pea controlling her little world, including the opening sequence in Baby Doll's bedroom? What if that's Sweet Pea reliving her own trauma, while the club fantasy is Sweet Pea working through it? Teenage Lobotomy The real world of Sucker Punch seems to show us only one lobotomy, Baby Dolls, with the prelude in the opening minutes and the aftermath coming at the end. There is, however, a second lobotomy sequence at the very beginning of the club fantasy, which Sweet Pea interrupts to argue against performing a mock lobotomy on stage, and refers to herself as the star of the show. Once again, we're offered two versions of the same story. We can choose to believe that this is the story of Baby Doll, that she created the fantasy world, and that her lobotomy puts a stop to it as she sacrifices herself to allow Sweet Pea to escape the asylum. That's a simple enough answer, but it's not the only one. By showing us Sweet Pea stopping her own lobotomy, the film offers up the idea that she is, at least in her own mind, changing the way her story is told. Instead of a mental patient going under the knife, she's a warrior fighting to be free. And the wig is a hint that Baby Doll is, in fact, not a separate person. Instead, she's a rebellious persona Sweet Pea has created as a coping mechanism. Though she's ultimately lobotomized anyway, Sweet Pea is free because the evil blue can't reach the real her anymore. A Tale of Two Sisters The parallels in Baby Doll and Sweet Pea's stories continue with the revelation that Rocket is Sweet Pea's sister, and Sweet Pea is in the club, and by extension, the asylum because she went after Rocket when she ran away from home. Baby Doll was committed to the asylum in the first place by her violent, money-grubbing stepfather because she accidentally killed her own little sister while trying to save her, which he then used as the pretense to have her locked up. In other words, both Baby Doll and Sweet Pea got where they are because they went after their sisters. Sweet Pea even loses her own sister when Rocket sacrifices herself to save Sweet Pea's life. The parallels are all there, bringing Sweet Pea and Baby Doll closer together and perhaps indicating that they're one and the same. This might even explain why Dr. Gorski never mentions Rocket's death or the deaths of Amber and Blondie. They're imaginary. The Wise Man Virtually every character in Sucker Punch with a speaking role exists both as a persona in the club fantasy and as a person in the asylum, with one very notable exception. The Wise Man. He first appears in Baby Doll's Japanese battle sequence and exists solely in the fight scenes until the ending in which he's revealed to be driving the bus that takes Sweet Pea West. We're never given any context for who the wise man really is, but he only appears in the real world after Sweet Pea is free of the asylum and the fantasies concocted there, which leads to two different interpretations of his place in the story. Sweet Pea's narration throughout the film suggests that she's telling the story from the future. If that's the case, the wise man is just a kindly bus driver she met during her journey to freedom. 
The other possibility is that he's an invention of her mind, a kind and nurturing man who speaks in fatherly platitudes dreamed up by a young woman who's never known anything but cruelty from men. A one-way trip to paradise. In the final scene of the movie, we get one last clue to the mystery of whether all of this is happening in Sweet Pea's head or if she really did escape the asylum. As the bus she's riding on drives away, it passes a billboard for the Paradise Diner. Back when Baby Doll arrives at the asylum, Blue mentions that's exactly where she'll be after her lobotomy. There won't be any of that for this one. Good. She'll be in paradise, if you know what I mean. If you believe this is all happening in Sweet Pea's head, the reference to paradise could mean that Sweet Pea herself is somewhere in her own mind where she's finally free. After the baby doll persona she created sacrificed herself through the lobotomy. Or perhaps Sweet Pea is just remembering her friend and heading off into the sunset to live a full life of paradise on her behalf. We've gone through the clues, but it's up to you to decide for yourself. It's like we talk about. You control this world.